Hi there. Um, today uh, I'm going to be talking about delegates and events, mainly more about events and anonymous delegates. Um, I'm going to be using Visual Studio 2008. You can use this with Express. It doesn't make any difference at all. Everything's still available, which is free to download from the Microsoft website. Um, I'm running this on my Dell XPS 1730. I've pushed the resolution down to uh, 1024768, so you should be able to see it's okay. And um, I hope this goes okay. So first thing I'm going to do is um, create a project. Now the project which I'm going to um, sort of demonstrate on um, actually has a progress bar. So we're going to sort of drop a progress bar into this prog bar 101. Now there's a bit of delay on my screen, so um, I might pause a little bit. It's not because I'm feeling slow, it's because my uh, uh, recording software is um, is uh, playing catch up. Like now I've only got half the screen which is actually rendered. Here we go. So uh, this is my form and I'm going to drag a button onto this which is going to be our, our, our task sort of uh, manager or the thing which is going to sort of kick off what we're going to do. So I'm going to look at the properties on this. I'm going to change this to go. Uh, now what I do is I double click on this and then we're going to fire off whatever we're going to fire off. So normally you might say um, cursor dot current cursor equals cursors dot wait. I copy that line because I'm lazy and I'm going to put it back to the default cursor. Now I'm going to substitute um, a little um, load in here. So I'm going to import the namespace threading. This is going to be our mock load. So I'm going to say thread.sleep two second load this goes off and we go for here we would say uh, load and it's as simple as that so we're going to change the cursor run the load whatever the program is which is sleep for two seconds um, and then come back and we're going to run this so here we go cursor two seconds comes back again we job done okay so this is a very simple application what happens is that uh, in, in the real world this goes off runs a batch against all the orders or something like that and uh, when you put it in it's very uh, it's very quick but what happens is um, is that um, orders start to build up over time and you've got to keep running this so what happens now is that um, there are 10 times as much data so it's going to do 10 times of 2 seconds so you've got 20 seconds to wait um, and of course during this time you don't know what's happened has it broken, has it stopped, has it crashed, infinite loop do I reboot my machine, what do I do so um, you sort of press upon the idea that maybe I need to have a progress bar now that's now finished so what you do is you go back to your form again you go back to your toolbox and you put a little progress bar. Oh great, I can see now whether or not it's going to um, fall apart. So we're looking here and we're going to say, from here we're going to say, um, okay, when you start the whole thing, oh sorry, progress bar, value, not validated, equals zero, um, and then you're going to say for each thread you're going to say progress bar increment 1 okay so we're going to hit F5 to play and now what should happen is every two seconds we're going to get a bit of a progress bar of course we didn't set the maximum value just kill that so for instance we know how many there's going to be so you can say progress Actually, I'm going to put it up here because you would normally do it here, or you might pull back how many there are. Progress bar max equals 10. Because it's going to go around 10 times, so it's going to increment 10 times. 
so now you can see that it's uh, starting to gather and you're getting an idea now. Now what happens is that um, say the orders go up so much that you don't really want to have a front end, you want to push this into like a, a console application which you're going to run as a scheduled task sitting off the server or perhaps you want to run it as a service um, which is sitting on the server. Now those, or, or, or maybe even a command prompt or maybe even ASP.NET web service or a web front end, I don't know. But the problem you've got is that you've, you've now bound um, like business logic into your WinForms front end application and you want to split this apart. You want to say to it, this is my front end application and I want to pair this out to a back end application. So this, you want it to be de detached from this whole process. So, uh, with this in mind, this is what we're going to do. Um, it's still going to update the progress bar, everything will look exactly the same as it does before, but it's going to become more detached. So, what I'm going to do, first things first, is that I'm going to pull this out into its own class. Now I'm going to create a new class, I'm going to call it Worker. This is the thing that's going to do the work. And there it is there. Pro prog bar 101, it's in the same namespace, so we don't have to do anything silly. And... Um, we're going to grab this information and drop this into worker public void do work. Uh, make sure I got threading. Okay, that's not in there anymore. Of course, we're going to use worker w equals new worker. Instead of load, we use w dot do work. Now, of course, prog bar one doesn't exist. You can't access this. So um, you got to think a way of how we're going to do this, and this is where events come in. Now you notice when I drop the um, button on the form, I just double clicked on it, and what that effectively does. If we scroll up, we've got initialize component, and this is every time you drag and drop a control, it um, fiddles around with this. So if we go to uh, the actual view, the actual contents of this, let me just get that out of the way. We've got the button, we've got something here, this line here is called an event handler, and you can, um, it's substantiating this new event handler. And um, it does it by using this plus equal, saying we're going to add this event. Now I'm going to just cut that out of there, and I'm going to put it in our form. It won't make any difference, but it's just here so you can see how, it, how the syntax pulls apart. So we're saying that this button click is going to have a new event, and it's going to be on the click event. And when they click on it, you're to go and do this. And you can add as many of these as you can like, you know, for any sort of event you have. Uh, there's like click, uh, focus, there's drag, there's all sorts. And you can find out what they are simply by highlighting it, hitting F4. And then if you click on this little uh, lightning icon, these are all the events. So I'm actually wiring up the click event there, which is already wired up. But this is like design time, so those are all the events you can have. So if you resize the control, whatever, you know, you may want to do that, I don't know. Um, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to create an event handler, but we're going to do it in our worker process. So we're going to say every time it increments, we want you to raise an event. So in here, I'm going to say public event, event args, oh, sorry, event handler. Uh, we need to give it a name. So we're going to say like um, uh, update prog bar. And that's it. That's declared our event handler as public. And um, we're going to say here, this is where we want to sort of raise it, so to speak. So we'd say like update prog bar. There we are. Object sender. Uh, we're going to say this. And um, we new events on new event args now I'm not going to get into event args right now but we're just going to send it, we're just going to raise it, we're not going to pass any data if you wanted to pass data through this then you can effectively um, inherit from event args in your own class and then pass that class through whatever properties that has but we're not going to do this, we're just going to raise it the act of raising it is going to increment the uh, progress bar